Hello, everybody. So um, I'm Benoit, and today I will present something slightly different from the uh, presentation I'm, I'm doing since a while. I will present the um, uh, how to build a project from the MVP in less than uh, to build a project to build the MVP in less than three months. Uh, that came from a um, really bad experience I had uh, with the customers uh, we, uh, where we had to rethink all the process and find something um, more useful to and more pract uh, practical uh, to build the projects. Um, so um, just to introduce me um, quickly, uh, so, uh, so I'm Benoît I'm Craftsman. I'm uh, owning my own solo company since uh, now uh, my third, uh, this is my fifth company. Uh, uh, and it has now uh, more than uh, 13 years. Uh, I'm working in P2P and building custom data point endpoint to the customers and uh, I'm a funding member of the Along ecosystems. And to answer to the initial question, I really joined the community in 2007 or 2008, something like it, uh, when I started to, um, to be um, a core developer in CouchDB project. Um, so uh, all of this talk will be about, about um, one way to, to, to build um, application. Uh, uh, where I think Erlang is mostly designed for. Uh, this is to build a peer-to-peer -peer or decentralized application. And mostly when I'm saying decentralized application, I'm saying local first application, meaning that the application where that keep the step more lo likely locally to be more resilient and talk from time to time or regularly with um, other remote nodes around uh, to be some kind of cluster or whatever you want to. Um, uh, so everything starts uh, by uh, uh, designing how, how you will, um, how your application will discuss uh, with the external world. And by that, I mean, uh, you need to decide if you want to build everything in Erlang, and it could be vastly complicated. Um, taking for my example, um, I built some uh, barrel, which is um, uh, a decentralized database uh, based on replication and peer to peer patterns. And, and uh, for our customers, we started to include parallels inside in own application. And it was very complicated because you need to, to order the logs, not coming from only from uh, the, your database in, included in, the, in that application, but also the logs coming from the applications itself by the application logic. So you have to, uh, so you have to under, uh, uh, to under, uh, to, application business, but also the uh, um, business of the libraries, which can be very complicated when you mix different process and different logic. So from time to time, you just want to, uh, to build some part of your application in Erlang and build the rest externally. Um, that could be in Erlang, that could be in Elixir, or that could be in another language and just talk with the Erlang application. This is the first things you need to decide uh, at first. Um, the second is uh, uh, you may want to decide uh, if you want which concern you want to isolate uh, to contain the problems. Uh, for example, uh, we know that Erlang is very resilient uh, until you start to, to handle um, external application inside that uh, external application using NIFs, uh, which is a way to bind some secrets in Erlang or using ports, or even just by um, talking to, um, to some device on, on your machines. Uh, so the moment you start to, to do to talk with that application, in the moment you start to introduce some latencies in your application and some logs. And from time to time, you want to isolate that and you, you will want to, 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 to put that uh, different nodes, uh, like having a C nodes discussing with um, your, your systems, uh, your drivers on the systems, uh, or um, putting everything corresponding to your database using NIFs, using lib libraries like Erlang, Sprox, DB, or anything inside one and all a long node so that a long node can crash anytime and can restart it or uh, uh, from the same node or from the same machine or somewhere else uh, without um, too much impact in the application um, so for things we will see the dependencies and by dependency i'm not only speaking about uh, dependencies you want you you put from you in your application the libraries you will want to put in your applications um, but I'm also talking about uh, dependencies of your services, uh, which will trigger something that we talk a little later in, um, is um, when do you start your application? When you consider that your application is started and when do you consider that your applications can start to, um, uh, to work um, accurately? Um, like uh, just taking a simple example, 
um, you start a database somewhere and your application can't start without having the database started. So you will have to wait for the database started or, uh, or to make sure that the database is started or to, or to do something when the database is not started. And, and this is something that you, you need to, to put on the paper um, before starting uh, even to, to code um, because it uh, creates a lot of um, edX letters. Um, and then you have to handle the dependencies inside uh, uh, inside your application, uh, speaking of to the um, uh, integrating some library in Erlang, etc. Uh, then you have to decide. Mainly, I know there are uh, two other libraries, uh, two other tools for at least. But let's talk about the two biggest one, Erlang and Key and Rebar Free. So Rebar Free is the trendy application right now, um, supported by the Erlang Foundation, but uh, uh, this is not the only one used to 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 put your uh, dependencies inside. You can also use Erlang MP, uh, which is used by um, uh, two of the biggest um, Erlang applications around in uh, in in the ecosystem, uh, which are RunTemQ and Kazoo, uh, which is um, uh, uh, voice systems, um, not only voice systems, the conference systems based in Erlang, and that is used um, in the industrial world of telecom. Uh, so which one to choose? Uh, it will depend. With R3, uh, everything is done in Erlangs. You can eventually extend that in Erlangs, but this is very complicated. Erlang and Key uh, are just make files, uh, GNU make files, uh, uh, the version before. And, and then um, extending uh, the deployment capabilities of, or building capabilities of your application that are just about making uh, new make files or uh, integrating make files. So, so it really depends on, on on your own um, package on, or your own needs. Um, Kazoo and RabbitMQ are using uh, Erlang MP at first because it's very easy to extend that. Uh, very easy to integrate your own logic of uh, deployments and packaging. Um, yeah. Uh, so, but let's talk about uh, uh, starting an MVP in Erlang. What does it mean? Uh, uh, because uh, I know that a lot of startups today are starting their MVP in Elixir because it seems simpler, but you can also do the simplest way, simple way in, in Erlangs. So starting uh, an MVP in Erlangs means uh, you, you need to start simply. Don't start to do, don't try to think much more about concurrency. First start to uh, first think about how you, want, you will under your state, how you will keep your state in memory and how we will change that state in are using call or message uh, to that process. And that for that, I will start just simply by using a process. Could be a simple process or could be uh, a supervised process using gain server, for example. Um, keep your state in a long process, add, add some message to modify it uh, using a call or span or cast uh, or just sending message uh, if you are using a GAN server. And um, don't start too complex. Uh, then if you have to handle state change, like I need to um, uh, to just receive that kind of message when uh, when I my process is locked uh, right now. Uh, so, uh, or when I want to, um, yeah, just taking a simple log. So I, I have um, a simple connection. Uh, I need to handle the first step connecting to, to the remote nodes. Then I will do that step and start to receive a message on that or the error I want to, to, to make sure to, to return to my user. And when I'm connected, uh, I'm going to the state connected, et cetera. And if you need that kind of things, then use GAN statems. And uh, to keep uh, it uh, simple, also, uh, you don't have to use a um, GAN server uh, to keep everything in memory. Uh, when you want some kind of key value store or just uh, some, um, yeah, some simple storage in, in memory, you can use ETS. Uh, or uh, recently in our last airlongs, you can also uh, use um, uh, persistence, the persistence models to persist um, uh, as um, uh, inside, the, inside the memory, uh, some data. Uh, in an immutable way. Uh, and then uh, I know I know that a lot of teams are starting also by um, trying to deploy a Kubernetes nodes or um, or anything like like it. Uh, 
don't start don't start it the, having uh, having kubernetes right uh, will take at least months uh, to have it uh, just start by uh, doing your, your your application using the along distribution because it's quite simple uh, uh, you with the along distribution you don't have to care uh, about the, the protocol uh, you will just pass message between nodes um, you still have something complicated but it's true for any distributed um, application and, and this is also true and maybe more complicated with kubernetes um, uh, you you will have to know when to join a node or when uh, you need to uh, if you have to wait for a node etc because your application sometimes can't start without having the other uh, node started so um, for that you can just use two simple patterns for the start uh, either you wait for um, another node uh, for a message from another node so um, just start um, start a loop and wait for the message. Then it will be the responsibility of the other node to send that message. Or you know that address of the node, you know that we, that node will start at its address, um, ping it until it answer, or ping many nodes until they answer and take some uh, in your clusters. Um, uh, you can have some logic, etc. Uh, you, you can find in barrel some application logic for that. Um, to handle, uh, to, 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 uh, handle that and to monitor the node when they crash down. Because then when it doesn't crash, uh, you will have to wait for another or you will have to wait for that node to be restarted, etc. cetera. Uh, but that two simple patterns are quite enough um, to start your MVP. Um, uh, and no, um, there is a typo there. Those your nodes um, don't start by uh, introducing the discovery in your application. Introducing discovery using EDP, et cetera, or, or Erlang Leap P2P or any other no, discovery library um, is fine, but do it later. Uh, for the start, just start with a static uh, configuration, a static list of the nodes you want to test uh, or you want to uh, have in your cluster. Uh, then you, for your MVP, you can add for your deployment tool uh, uh, that static list uh, is very easy. And don't try to use in any file or or any other um, YAML or any other thing for the configuration. Just start with the uh, config uh, along basic tools for that. Uh, that's the old version of my tool. Okay, uh, problem of concurrency. Uh, then when you are using the along distribution, you have something other to, to handle. Uh, uh, where do you span the process and how do you span process on different nodes, etc. Um, so in Erlangs, you have two ways to, to, to span a process. You can span a process um, remotely and receive the message uh, locally, or you can span the message locally. Uh, you can span the process uh, locally and get the message uh, from remote and pass the message to remote and receive the message from remote. Um, I think the easiest way to think about it is to span uh, a process on the remote node and start to collect the message locally. Uh, because then uh, it will be the responsibility of the other nodes uh, to handle its own logic or uh, own programs like memory calls, the memory calls up, or uh, the disk start to fill up, et cetera, et cetera. Only the remote node, node knows about that. And this is quite simple to then to start your logic remotely and get uh, the stream of message locally uh, later. And you have different libraries for that. You have um, Fabric that has been externalized from the CouchDB project and many other uh, that you can find on XPM or other things. Um, and this is what I'm describing there. Uh, so you have node A um, spanning a process on node B and it's spanning by, uh, via a known process. Uh, so you name that process on the remote node. You just send a, process, a message to that um, a remote process, span, this remote process we span and return the process ID to your local process. Uh, and you and then the two processes will exchange each other very easily. And uh, you can, instead of trying to monitor that remote process, um, just uh, uh, keep a watch uh, if it time out at some point, if you don't get a message after some time. And that uh, is the easiest way for MDP to, to monitor that remote process. Um, okay. Uh, then we can start everything and is, uh, right now uh, by the memory. Then you can start to think about persisting that. 
So you can use in, you can use Nesia, which is built in Erlang. Uh, Nesia allows you to um, uh, to persist on any nodes the same data very easily. Uh, uh, recently, you can also change the storage in Nesia to use RocksDB or any other uh, plugin you want to to add for that. Um, the problem with Nesia is that you will have uh, a lot of issues. Um, uh, even if it's improving the letter version of Erlangs about uh, the size of the message or when a Amnesia node is becoming down, is going down, uh, then you will have to um, uh, to handle the recollection because when the node is going back online, it will start to synchronize with other nodes. So we'll, you will have a lot of noise on your, of your network. And, and, and that noise of the network can be, uh, can be an issue in Two way you you get too much message on the on the other nodes, or also your bandwidth is uh, too much used, and this is sometimes very complicated. And, and because your bandwidth will be too much used, of course, then it will start. You will see your other nodes starting to crash. Uh, you can all use other libraries like Erlang Rocks TV, uh, which is on my um, GitLab, or other. Uh, this is a um, bindings a if bindings of um, uh, Rocks TV. Uh, using the um, uh, .nis, so it doesn't log that much the VM, or leveled, which is um, quite slower than RocksDB, but it's uh, fully native in Erlang and works like the same of Erlang for RocksDB. Uh, or you can just log to this using two libraries, this log or again, this is another library for me uh, that I will talk later. Uh, this log is quite nice, so you can log anything you want on the disk and, and start to replay. Uh, on your process, on the process, uh, et cetera, on recovery, stuff like this. Um, the, because you are distributed, you want to replicate, so you can use Nesia to replicate, like I said, or Barrel, which is my own libraries, um, uh, which is working um, just like CouchDB, et cetera, is, so it pass all the revision of the data to another node and start to converge to a state, uh, just like CLT, but not really like a CLT. Uh, this is a way to convert using the revision tree. Uh, you can also use a replication using consensus, using modern algorithm like uh, uh, like Raft, uh, using the RAR library from RabbitMQ, which I uh, advise a lot. This is very easy to um, to replicate consistently uh, to different nodes, but also to do some fan out if you want if you want to have some follower and just to query that follower for reads concurrency, for example. Very easy, or use logs for a new vigor, um, but that's not much maintained uh, these days. Um, coming, there is also a new, uh, a new library using um, the new decentralized algorithms um, Atlas, which is mostly, uh, which has been um, published in June. Um, uh, you will find a repository on, on the Incumity Media repository soon about that uh, new Atlas library. Uh, this is a completely decentralized um, consensus are going, so you don't have to know the number of nodes. They can come and go very easily, and you don't have to um, to handle a static uh, leader of stuff like this that can be problematic. Um, you can also store your process and replay, uh, store your process state and replay the message from anywhere from uh, for reason, resiliency or scalability using um, can persist, uh, which is mostly working um, like. Um, persist uh, in um, Kafka, uh, in, uh, sorry, in Aka. Uh, so you are persisting the message on the, on the file systems and you can replay that and play them somewhere else like earlier or play them locally on different process. So you can do some queries, etc. on that. Uh, and you can find it on my GitHub. Uh, this is actually closed and I will finally open that library this week, tomorrow, most probably. And um, yeah. Then you need to think to interact with the world. Uh, and I would say, don't try to go with the RPC, et cetera, or anything complicated for that. Just use HTTP because HTTP is well known and, and we have very well um, stable um, application uh, used uh, for the real world problems. For HTTP 1.1, 1.2, uh, and uh, soon free, Cowboy will, um, Cowboy has started some, Loic has started some work for Cowboy free, for HTTP free. In uh, and uh, you can use um, uh, to converse with, uh, with your HTTP uh, library uh, or external application using Acne and uh, and upcoming uh, with uh, this week release, you will have WebSocket in Acne and also HTTP2. Uh, so you don't have to use code 
or anything. Uh, um, what we are missing right now to really talk uh, um, uh, to really talk with the um, HTTP application with the web application is WebRTC because things like Live View etc. is kind of nice, but uh, the world is using WebRTC right now uh, to really do uh, something live. Uh, between application and we really miss that um, kind of library so there is a work started on um, uh, that is started that uh, that will goes with Barry in the community media projects and uh, this is based on Janus and is mostly working like Kazoo uh, building some kind of uh, switch over WebRTC message and WebRTC node uh, so you can switch between uh, web apps and um, Erlang application etc and uh, you can build your protocol on top using JSON RTC. This is very simple, or using something like um, the protocol that you can find on the Eternity uh, uh, blockchain uh, protocol uh, specifications, which are kind of nice. And forget to click stable finally. Um, add, measure add measurements, unlock three graphs. Don't forget that. This is very easy. To, this is very important to have that on, uh, uh, from the day one. Uh, don't trust the customers and don't let the trust in the customer trust you. Um, it creates too much conflict at some points. Uh, uh, just make sure to uh, to measure anything or to add some logs, etc. Uh, it's important for uh, to make sure that everything is going well, uh, but also important to um, to uh, to make sure that you can um, scale later and, and measure that scalability. Um, for, so for that, I would suggest to use Logger uh, if you are using latest version of Erlang, which I suggest a lot. Uh, and you can use uh, open source or uh, if you feel adventurous, open telemetry uh, to add tracing and metrics in your apps. Uh, I'm just in progress to, to put everything in open telemetry and while using open source until now. Uh, you can find uh, the documentation on open telemetry IO. And this is also a supported project by the Allen Foundation um, uh, using uh, the observability, observability working groups inside the Allen Foundation. And at testing, of course, um, use EUnit for anything simple, just the simple function in, in, in your model. Common test to start to build uh, some regression test and scenario that you want to really test every time on show. That can also be uh, usable as a documentation for uh, bootstrapping new developers. And start quickly to add quick check, um, which I prefer or proper uh, if you don't want to pay a license for quick check, but you will lose some things uh, from QuickCheck uh, to make sure you didn't, you don't forget any uh, case of validation and you want to ensure your data model, but also concurrency model. And TLA plus, this is something I have to test. I want to start to write some models and, and, and uh, load testing with the along. I think there is a talk coming um, um, that, uh, that will be interesting with that. Yeah, and scale later, once you have your MVP, uh, you may want to start to scale a little. Uh, using the new feature of Erlangs, you can replace the Erlang distribution by your own. Uh, for example, uh, for customers, we are using multi-pass TCP instead of a single pass TCP, which allows us to scale between different TCP uh, connections uh, using the Erlang multi-pass TCP. Uh, improve the mesh using library, lip 2 p or uh, Alien Partisan. Or, and start to repress uh, slowly, but surely, uh, your single process. You are using by using different patterns, um, introducing multiple processes, one uh, writer, one process to write, multiple uh, process to read, uh, find out, uh, take your data and find out to multiple process, start to read and do something, etc., and measure every time. 